many people. Who's talking about Iraq? Since 9-11, we've been villainizing Islam. We've been villainizing Muslims, and that's not the truth. They're not, they're not villains. There are extremists everywhere. There are even Christian extremists. The KKK is still alive. Oh, because, because they're not wearing their bed sheets with the holes in them. They're not alive. They wear suits and ties. They run Wall Street. They run the corporations. And they just, how, how you doing, police? They wear badges, too. The KKK is alive. So what we need to do is educate ourselves. And even if you can't be the ones to you know, be members of the military or be members of the police force or be the DA or be a lawyer or be the, the change from within, we can be changed as individuals. We can contribute to the BDS movement and we can stop this atrocity that's happened across the globe, across, in Palestine and in Ferguson. And I want to say, now there's not enough black people out here. We need to see more black people supporting everybody. Because we should be the number one people who understand how it is to be oppressed. We are still oppressed. I don't care if Kerry Washington is on scandal. I don't care if LeBron James is making how many millions of dollars a year. We are still oppressed. Just because some people got a head start in the race doesn't mean we didn't start late. Just because we they got a head start in the race and black people started 400 years later and Usain Bolt got ahead of some white people or got ahead of some Hispanic people doesn't mean that the other people who are behind can't have a chance. So we need to be in solidarity. I need more black people out here because we should understand more than anybody. And when we are, and, and I need more Muslims and Arabs and whites and Hispanics and Asians out during these Palestine protests because we are all together. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Listen up guys real quick. We are privileged to have on the phone all the way from Gaza. All the way from Gaza, who wants to speak into this movement today. And so we're going to try to put the microphone to the phone, and we're going to hear from our brothers in, in Gaza right now. Isn't that amazing? Let's give them a big Columbus. Let's give them a big Columbus, Ohio. Welcome. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Mohammed Kavaidi. I live in the Gaza Strip, a place that has been under the Israel blockade for more than eight years. Actually, I don't know from where should I begin, but I think that all of you know the situation in Gaza. You know that the Israeli bombing is still ongoing in spite of the ceasefire between Israel and Palestinians. I, I hear the sounds of explosions everywhere. Israel kills civilians, including children and women. I don't know how Israel calls this military is a, a, military, a military operation against civilians, but I think this is a real massacre. This is a real genocide against all the civilians in Gaza. I don't know. What, what shall I do while I'm waiting for the target which may target me? I think that Israel kill all civilians in Gaza. They, I don't know where the bank of gold Israel is talking about. The situation is going worse right now in Gaza while Israel refuses the demands of all Palestinians. I think that uh, Hamas demands is the, uh, the rights of Palestinians. I think that opening the borders and lifting the siege on Gaza is uh, the rights, not the demands. I think that lifting the siege and opening the borders, building uh, an airport are the rights of all Palestinians, not only for Hamas. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, being uh, a human being. Uh, I, I thank all of you for supporting us uh, from Columbus, I mean, in the UK. Uh, I'm really proud of all of you for being standing with the Palestinian issue. I really proud, I'm really proud of all of you who support the Palestinian, uh, the Palestinians. 
I'm, I'm not Hamas, I'm no Fareh, but I support the Palestinian resistance, regardless of the political differences. I think that, um, I think, I don't know how the war asked Hamas uh, to stop launching missiles from the Gaza Strip while Israel began and announced this real massacre against all Palestinians. When we demand in the lives of Palestinians, I think that, uh, I want to live a real, uh, uh, a dignified life, not more. Uh, I, uh, as, a, uh, as I'm a student, I can, I cannot uh, go out to complete my studies. We just want to ask you real quick as we wrap up. We thank you so much for coming or for being on the phone. We stand in solidarity with you, and we just want to know what we can do to continue to fight and to stand with you. It's okay. We're going to try to get him back. In between that time, we're going to have uh, Bala introduce another speaker that's going to come to you. All right, guys. Um, this is somebody I've known for uh, many years. Um, her name is Jenna Al Akhras. And she was actually the youngest person to enter the blockade of Gaza. And she did deliver aid to the people of Gaza at the age of 17. And we should all be proud of her. We should all be very proud of her. Where are you, Jenna? Everybody, that's a real deal. Hi, everybody. All right, so I've been listening to everyone who's had something to say today, and I feel like a lot of what I would be doing right now would be repeating what's going on. So if you guys don't mind, as a little bit of a change, I'm going to talk a little bit, but I want to share a poem that I wrote. Um, I wrote it actually when the massacre in Gaza occurred in uh, 2009, and I feel like, you know, unfortunately four years later, it's just as relevant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit, and then I'm going to share my poem with you guys if that's okay. Oh, yes. Woo. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Jen Akhras. I was a former president of the Committee for Justice in Palestine here at OSU. Um, about to be a law student at Ohio State. And uh, I just want to say thank you. It's completely, like, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming here. This is one of the most diverse protests I have ever <laughs> seen. And that just speaks to the testament that the issue of Palestine isn't about Palestinians, like solely. It is a human issue. It is a completely human issue. And I stand here before you not as a Palestinian, not as an American, but as a human. On July 8th, Israel launched an offensive titled Operation Protective Edge. It's been over a month, and 1,959 residents have been killed. That's over 50 people a day. Over 10,000 have been injured. Almost 700 are children, and I'm rattling off numbers, and that may not seem like much, but look at this crowd around you, and that's almost four times this crowd right here, obliterated, completely obliterated. In December of 2008, Israel launched Operation Cast Lead, which left over 1,400 residents dead. Since that time, 1,400 has been the benchmark in my head, that never again will it go past 1,400. When this started, I told myself it would never, ever, ever get that bad again. But it has, and it did, and it is. This is the world's largest open-air prison. When I visited in 2010, I remember thinking that this is a city of children. It is a city of children. The average age is extremely, extremely young. It's my age. They are, these forms of collective punishment do nothing to alleviate the conflict. They are ineffective, they are cruel, and in these situations, it is innocent civilians who suffer the most. Mohammed Sulaiman, a man in Gaza, said, I look forward to surviving. If I don't remember that I wasn't Hamas, I was not a militant, nor was I used as a human shield, I was home. This is the reality for a lot of the people living in Gaza. We stand here today calling for an end to this massacre, a lift of the siege, an end to the occupation, a cease to US funding for Israel, and I urge you and I urge you and I urge you to boycott products that are directly funding the occupation. I squirm at the thought that my tax dollars are being used to kill my own people abroad, and at the very least, I have a choice in what products I choose to purchase. These are forms of solidarity that we all must take part of. As we stand with the people of Gaza, we must also stand with the people of Syria, 
who are struggling against the tyrant and have had to bury 160,000 of their own. We must stand with the people of Egypt. And my friend Muhammad Sultan, who has been on hunger strike for over 180 days. We must stand with the people of Iraq, who are struggling against religious extremists targeting those strictly for their religious affiliations. We must stand with the people of Ferguson, because the killing of unarmed black men in our community cannot and should not become the norm. <laughs> Too many black boys never have the opportunity to become black men. That's right. That's right. The fact that Palestinians overseas are offering advice to Ferguson residents on how to deal with tear gas, the world, you people that's this big, our struggle is one. Right. We have no choice but to stand in solidarity with those who are oppressed against their oppressors. Remember that there is no equality in this power dynamic. We cannot tell occupied people how to resist their occupiers. We cannot tell occupied people how to resist their occupiers. We cannot dictate how furious they are allowed to be. We cannot criticize their concerns as illegitimate and aggressive. We can hear their stories. So thank you again for coming today. We are all human. We are all Gaza. And if you don't mind, this is a poem that I wrote, and I hope that you find it as helpful as I did writing it. Peace scares me. It frightens me, it makes me cringe because peace generally results in pieces and my pieces are smaller than yours. Peace means 18% scattered olive trees galore, caterpillars the size of elephants bulldozing my front door. Peace looks like lit up skies, fireworks I didn't pay for, staring down a barrel that owns me being told two unequal sides add up to war. Peace feels caged in, Borders that taunt me, a horizon I can't see past, and tunnels that supply me. Peace sounds aggressive, barking at me to prove my identity. As my grandparents take orders from a child serving an unjust entity, peace tastes like blood. Watering grass that will not grow, absorbed quickly and quietly because there's no one there to know, peace smells like death. Shrapnel pulled from a battle wound, a stench that sticks through six years of siege, a generation that considers itself doomed. Peace is a boy with a stone facing a tank. Peace is a city of orphan children. Peace is being frisked at a checkpoint. Peace is the siren of a police car. Peace is a grenade escaping the throat of a mother. Peace is a playground of corpses. Peace is a glistening shrapnel necklace. Peace is a failed UN resolution. Peace is a highlighted war crime. So I repeat, Peace scares me, it frightens me, it makes me cringe because peace results in pieces and my pieces are always smaller than yours. Thank you. Guys, we have somebody uh, from two peace organizations and a Christian organization. It's just a testament to this is a human struggle. It's not about, again, it's not about color or religion. We're all in this together. And they're going to talk about the children and what they witnessed in Palestine. Um, my name is Connie Hammond. I uh, am with the Progressive Peace Coalition. I would like to thank all of the organizers of this rally. In the previous rallies, these have been peaceful, well organized, and I am so proud to be a part of this. I am so moved by what we've seen today. This has been such a hard month for all of us. I have been so. Out